I'm running for the open seat on my union strike committee. I had these buttons made up. Hey, what do you think of that slogan? Vote for Tully. Well, that certainly says it. <laughs> Joe? Did you think that up yourself, or did you hire one of those media experts? <laughs> no. I planned the whole thing myself. There's no expertise of any kind connected with my campaign. <laughs> oh. Good morning, Mary Brenner. Good morning, Ed. Do you have a pen? Yes. I'd like you to do me a favor, then. Last night, at 3 a.m., <laughs> I finished my play, Big Shoulder Symphony. Oh, Ed, I'm now, wait a minute, just wait a minute, wait a minute. So... <laughs> Since it was thanks to your encouragement, inspiration, and faith in me, that I was finally able to end 12 years of searching for exactly the right dialogue, images, and words, I'd like you to be the one to write the word curtain. No, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Ah, uh, curtain is so hackneyed. Uh, just right the end. Okay. No, wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, curtain, the end. Ah, uh, oh, I've got it. Fini. Fini. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, that's so pretentious. Uh, what do you think? How about I write curtain in pencil and we'll let you look at it for a while? No, 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 no. Write curtain in ink. I don't know why I do this to myself. Ed, I am just so proud of you. <laughs> hey, Ed, why does she get to write curtain? You know, I've encouraged you over the years, too. I'm sorry, Joe Tucker. I was never inspired by your challenge to write or get off the pot. Congratulations, Ed. Hey, way to go, Big Ed. Thank you, thank you. What's your play about? Oh, you uh, looking for a one-line summary, Ronnie Dicker? Well, if you can make it shorter, that'd be good, too. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's impossible. That'd be like trying to come up with a one-line summary of uh, Tennessee Williams Streetcar Named Desire. A neurotic Southern Belle goes to visit her sister and brother. No, 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 no. I'm sure you can summarize the plot, but what about the intent, the essence? You can't describe the theme of Streetcar in one mere sentence. Society destroys sensitive individuals. I'm sure you can. I was talking about him. <laughs> Society destroys sensitive individuals. I guess that's the theme of my play, too. Very succinctly put. Thank you again, Mary Brenner. Hey, Ed, I heard you finished your play. Congratulations. Thank you, Frank. What's it about? How society destroys sensitive individuals. <laughs> really? I'd love to read it. Oh, no, no. None of you are going to read it. You're all going to see it. Uh-oh. What do you mean, see it? I mean that I'm going to produce and direct this play myself. I'm not taking any chances with the vagaries of all these theater boards and artistic directors. After 12 years of sweat and anguish, if anybody screws this play up, it's going to be me. Well, we've all got faith in you, Ed. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Tucker. Good morning. Morning. Boy, this union election is really heating up. Have you seen these pamphlets that are lying around the lobby? Isn't that something? Huh. Tully, a menace to you, your union, and the world. <laughs> Who is this Dabronsky? Uh, Tully's opponent for the strike committee. Works down on two. Uh, he's a real union man. <laughs> you don't think Tully's a real union man? Well, read the pamphlet. Tully's missed two membership meetings in the last 26 years alone. <laughs> It's the Tully menace. Oh my God. Have you seen these? I think Dubronsky's running a smear campaign. You think? Tully, in this cartoon, you're pictured with horns, cloven hooves, and you're dancing on a grave marked Our Union. Boy, you win three dance contests, and they never let you forget it. <laughs> Did you really miss two whole union meetings, Tully? It was my wife's fault. She was giving birth to our children. <laughs> Character assassination, mudslinging. Well, Vincent T. Tully will never stoop so low. Oh! What was that? Uh, Ed's auditioning actors for his play in the lounge. Here? Isn't that going to be a little distracting? <laughs> Not if you're used to living in my neighborhood. <laughs> no, 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 dear. 
The character doesn't die physically, it's a death of the spirit. I thought that's what I was doing. Darling, you fell on the floor clutching your heart. What should I clutch? Perhaps a copy of Uta Hagen's Respect for Acting. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Frank, mm. uh, a question. Have you found a qualified reviewer for my play opening? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. There's still some freelance writers out there. I thought Simpson might be the one. Simpson Frank, the man's a fossil. He hasn't liked anything since New Faces of 21. All right, then, Katie Penland. No, 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 Frank, not Katie Penland. Everybody knows about our crazy trip to the moon. She's never forgiven. You see, it was a one-night-only performance. <laughs> Ed, what do you want me to do? You've turned down everybody I've come up with for the last four days. Yeah, 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 I know it's tough. Well, if worse comes to worse... No, Ed, not you. Oh, of course not. I could do it under a pseudonym if... Uh... <laughs> Ed, this is a town of eight million people. I'm sure we can find someone whose opinion you respect, who doesn't hate you, and with whom you haven't had an affair. <laughs> and if not... <laughs> I'll fly somebody in. All right, thanks, Frank. I really appreciate that. Mary Brenner, <clears throat> have you uh, read that play I gave you, Waiting for Godot? Yes. Yes, I have. Huh. Beckett. Samuel Beckett. What did you think? Well, see, Ed, the thing is, you're a theater expert, and I... Well, while I enjoyed the dialogue and the characters, I just... I didn't have the foggiest idea what it was about. <laughs> your honesty it's so refreshing do you know how many people out there pretend that they know what Godot means oh pseudo intellectuals blowing hot air expounding endlessly on and on look some afternoon we'll set aside a few hours and I'll explain to you exactly what the play is about good I look forward to that oh, Ed. yeah Tully I'm sorry I can't make it to the opening of your play I, but it's my union election night. I'm sure you understand as one cockeyed dreamer to another. <laughs> sure, Tully, I uh, hope you break a leg. On the biggest night of my life? That's a hell of a thing to say. No, no, that, that's how we theater people wish one another well. Oh. Well, I hope you rupture yourself. <laughs> for the airfare. All right, all right, all right, all right. Goodbye. Damn. Who's that? Ah, uh, my folks. They were coming up from New Orleans next Friday. I mean, I haven't seen them in a long time, and now they're canceling out on them. Oh, you must be really disappointed. Yeah, I've got to go to Ed's play. <laughs> I think I speak for all us opening nighters when I say, <laughs> You know, I've got an uncle in Atlanta I haven't seen in years. That might be worth a shot. Come on, you guys. How bad can it be? December the 5th, 1979. <laughs> this young reporter was covering a meaningless gridiron tilt between Oshkosh and Gonzaga. Windshield factor was 32 degrees below zero. The score was 48 to nothing. I don't remember who. I got frostbite and almost lost the tip of my nose. Yeah, but you're not saying it. I was standing right. on the sidelines. The snow was so deep on the field that day, the referee planted the down marker on my foot. Yeah, but Ed's play is As I was writhing on the ground, Oshkosh decided to run a power sweep led by their two guards, Joe the Italian Anvil DeLuca and Moses Dr. Punishment Patterson. I broke three ribs in my jaw was wired shut for a month. Yeah, but I can't believe you think It's going to be close. <laughs> Why do you have to assume the worst? Maybe it's going to be good. Mary, listening to Ed's thoughts for three minutes is enough to drive you bad. Just imagine three hours. Ed is an intelligent, sensitive man. His reviews are well-written, usually witty. All right, maybe the play's going to be a bit experimental, but Ed's a friend. All he's asking is that you give up one night of your life to share something that is really important to him. Why can't you just go in there with an open mind? You might be surprised. You might enjoy it. That is a wonderful attitude, Mary. Let me ask you, have you ever written any drama reviews? Yeah, sure. I know. I know. No. I never have. Uh, Frank, I would not know where to begin. Well, how about beginning with Ed's play? Uh-uh. Oh, no. come on, Mary, please. Now he's driving it. me crazy trying to come up with someone. Frank, I thought of the perfect person. Looks like you dodged the bullet, Mary. Who is it, Ed? Mary Brenner. <laughs> no, she won't do it, Ed. I just asked her. Why? 
And I'm a friend. You don't want to have... Oh, no. You think you're going to hate it. No, not at all. That's the only explanation I can think of, Ed. Frank, please. Please. All right. I'll do it. Thank you, Mary. Mary. Thank you. And the B train clacked along. Clack, 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 clack. My mother's face floated out at me. And there was blood. Blood on the B train. And all the night wrapped around me like a shroud as I stumbled and fell. And fell. And fell. And fell. And fell. And... Fell. and, fell. and... What are you nuts? What time is it? Eleven seventeen. Well, that was quite a night at the theater. Frank, there's still another act to go. Oh my God! I just had no idea Ed's play was going to be this bad. No. Experimental. I thought it was going to be good. No. Uh, well, yes. But different. All I want to do is go home. Yes. No, 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 but soon. I just, I don't know what I'm going to write about this. What are you going to say to Ed after the play? Uh-uh, Mary. You are not going to steal my empty flattery. It's all I've been thinking about for the past three hours. Was there something any of you liked about it? You know, any little tiny thing? Nobody got hurt. <laughs> What was your favorite part? When my date fell asleep and stopped complaining. Ronnie. I'd say the nudity if it wasn't for all that awful dialogue. And usually I enjoy nudity. Guys, you're not helping me. I've got to write about this. Look, Mary, why don't you ask some real theater critics? There were about six of them here tonight. I think they could be reached at home by now. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm not going to give up. There's still another act. Maybe all these loose ends will be tied together. Maybe Ed's theme about society destroying sensitive individuals will surface. <laughs> Maybe because there is another. Frank, do I really have to write this? Mary, if we didn't print a review, we'd just be ignoring Ed's play, and that would be more insulting than anything you could write. Let's hope so. <laughs> well, there's nothing more I can do backstage. Do you mind if I sit here with all of you and uh, watch it the rest of the way? Oh, oh that's pleasure, terrific. Ed. Oh, thanks. You know, Mary Brenner, working with the actors, molding their performances, seeing my ideas come to life, I could just kick myself that I hadn't done this sooner. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, I wish the other drama critics hadn't walked out, but, uh, you know, jealousy. <laughs> Besides, I knew Big Shoulders Symphony wasn't a piece for the masses. I knew it wasn't Cats. I knew it wasn't Annie. I knew it wasn't Der Überschwein. Uh, what? Der Überschwein, a German expressionist piece in the 20s. Uh, it means the super pig. It was uh, quite popular in its day. Is it playing anywhere tonight? <laughs> And I wonder if you could explain something from the... What? Please don't talk while the play is on. <laughs> With what play? There are no actors on stage when there's yes. just the... Yes. Exactly.
Yeah. Ed, it's two in the morning. It's two in the morning. <laughs> On the most glorious night of my life. <laughs> uh, I felt so exhilarated after the performance that I, I just had to take a walk. <laughs> I saw that your light was on, and I figured you were uh, here feverishly typing away, <laughs> pausing only to curse that you have but ten column inches to pack with praise. Yeah, well, uh, packing it with praise has been a sort of a problem. What do you mean? Ed, can I be honest? No, no, please. <laughs> Anything but honesty. Then you know. Of course I know. The real performance tonight was mine. My bravado. My pretending that Big Shoulders Symphony was anything but a complete and utter disaster. A hapless, self-indulgent, oafish, idiotic perspiration stain on the undershirt of the legitimate theater. <laughs> Oh, Ed. Oh, well. Maybe I'm just too close to it. <laughs> you know, that's it. I'm just too close to it. I'm too close to it, aren't I, Mary Brenner? No, Ed. <laughs> maybe... Maybe we're both too close to it. <laughs> I wish we were. You know, I thought tonight was going to be the greatest night of my life. When the house lights went down, I was transported. I heard my words, my beautifully crafted words, falling on the audience like a gentle rain. And then suddenly the play was over. Sir, so, suddenly? <laughs> Yeah, well, eventually, <laughs> you know, my entire career, I've sat in that audience watching the others, dreaming about my moment. <laughs> the curtain call, the ovation, cries of author, author. <laughs> I take my bow. I'm showered with roses. The applause is deafening. I'm so sorry. At least you clapped politely. <laughs> Bless your heart. I would have stood. I was just so darn tired. <laughs> I'd hoped they were going to shower you with roses. You know we all did. Well, maybe next time. Right. Maybe next time. You mean it? I wasn't really serious. Do you, do you really think I should risk this kind of devastating humiliation again? Oh. Doesn't matter what I think. You know that someday somebody, something, is going to come into your life and inspire you to write a play that only you can write, no Beckett, no anybody else. Before you know it, I'll be writing Curtain again. Or Finney, or The End, you know, right. whatever you like. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think my problem is that I, I, I'm just too experimental. Next time I'll try something more mainstream, uh, something light-hearted, uh, sort of feel-good kind of play that you can take the whole family to, that <laughs> leaves you with a smile here and a warm feeling here. Sounds good. The only trouble is I hate that kind of play. <laughs> well. Thanks for everything. Would you like a... A cup of coffee or anything? No, no, you... It's late, and, uh, you got a review to write. And, uh... <coughs> Mary Brenner? When you write the review, please, be completely honest. Uh, the other critics are gonna be. At least when I read your review, 
I'll know that I've been mercilessly savaged by a friend. <laughs> How'd the election turn out? Well, I am very proud of my union brothers. Last Friday night at the voting box, they made a statement, a mandate. There is no room for that slimeball Dubronsky on our strike committee. Then you won! By a vote. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Morning, troops. Good. How are your weekends? Great. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mary, what is this? That's my review, Frank. <laughs> Come on, now, really, what is it? It's my review of Ed's play. Mary, can I see you at my office? All right, now, what is this? Frank, why would my answer have changed? Well, we just took a little walk, and I thought maybe you thought of a more reasonable answer on the way. <laughs> Mary, these are reviews of Ed's play. Self-indulgent pap, delirious rambling, awful, awful, awful. And here we have the critics who rate things on a scale of one to ten. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> but what does Mary Brenner of the Chicago Eagle have to say? A noble failure with flashes of insight, could have used some trimming. You didn't think it could have used some trimming? No, trimming would imply that some of it should be kept. Oh, Frank. Mary, relax, relax. I'm just having a little fun. I thought the way you took care of things was great. Really? Really. I mean, it was a sticky situation, and I'm glad we had you to handle it. Yeah, Ed's a friend, and I knew you'd shade the truth, but I'm impressed that you could lie this audaciously. Now, wait a, wait a minute, Frank. I didn't lie. After thinking long and hard about it, I happened to find some merit in Ed's play. That's not a rave review. It's a impartial, faintly encouraging, but make no mistake about it, bad review. I don't see how anyone could interpret it any other way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Later tonight on The Equalizer, McCall enters the picture when a reporter sees too much and her story could cost her her life. But first, an around-the-clock bodyguard leaves Alex a little ticked on Foley Square. Next. <laughs>